Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about the adaptive immune system and how we acquire immunity. So remember that the immune system can be broken up into the innate immune system and the adaptive. The innate immune system is non-specific and you don't create any immunological memory to pathogens. The adaptive immune system is specific and you do create immunological memory to specific pathogens. So how do we create or acquire this immunological memory? Well, there's four different ways. You can first break these four different ways up into two major types, the active and the passive. So this is, act, so if we look at the active processes for developing immunological memory, that means you yourself create the immunological memory. That means you make the antibodies against the pathogen. So let's have a look at the two different ways that you can make antibodies against pathogens. One is naturally acquired and the other is artificially acquired. So that means for the adaptive immune system, it can happen actively where you create the antibodies. Naturally means you are getting something from the environment that you are now creating an immune response to. So usually this is some sort of infection. So your body amounts an immune response creating antibodies with immunological memory against a specific infection. So this is naturally acquired active immunity. When we look at artificial, this is where we actually get exposed to that pathogen from artificial means. And so the most common type here is that of a vaccination. So for example, people back in the 1950s were experiencing polio. Now we have a vaccine for polio in which we get exposed to an inactivated form of that infection and our body can create antibodies against it so we no longer get polio. So we now have created immunological memory against an inactivated infection basically. So that means there's natural and artificial underneath the active type of immunity. When we look at passive, so when something's passive, it means you're not doing anything about it. In active, you are, you're creating the antibodies. In passive, you're not creating the antibodies. You're simply receiving already made antibodies. So how does this happen? Well, again, you can break it up into natural and artificial. Please don't get confused thinking that natural means it's the best way and artificial means it's not the best way. Natural simply just means it's coming from environmental sources, okay? So if we look at naturally acquired passive immunity, this is where we get antibodies that are preformed within breast milk. So our mother's or maternal antibodies. So these help protect bub in times in which it can't mount its own immunological defense. Artificially acquired passive immunity is where these antibodies are already produced in another person or in another animal and you receive them either via blood plasma or via blood serum. And this can happen for a number of different diseases. So for example, it can happen if somebody has suspected uh, contraction of rabies. So this is like this post-prophylactic injection of antibodies that are already preformed to fight off the infection. Now often you'll get this when there's not enough time for you yourself to create the antibodies against the infection. So they just directly give you the antibodies. So again, for rabies, if they suspect that you may have already got it, or maybe if you already have tetanus, for example. These are just two examples of many in which you get the monoclonal antibodies from a source that may be a person or from an animal. So again, to summarize, when it comes to acquired immunity, you can break it up into active processes where you make the antibodies or passive processes where you simply receive the antibodies. Both have naturally acquired and artificially acquired sources. So these are the four types of immunity.